Hey guys, before we begin, I'd just like to remind you all to subscribe and turn on the notification bell because otherwise you won't be able to find my videos, alright? Alright, okay. Hello guys and welcome to California Maggie here, hope you're doing well and welcome back to Chess of Blades. It's been so long because I had to cover a few things plus thesis. It's a really busy process and it's gonna get even more busy now that I'm at the last stretch. So I hope you understand that I'm not gonna upload as diligently as most other YouTubers because they got a lot of their lives on this. Anyway, let's just continue. If I'm right, we were in the juicy bits and I just want the very Italian, very French Ezio to moan in my ears. Mm. March 2, 1903. Yeah, that seems right. <laughs> Go back up, bitch. Oh shoot. Oh, by the way, have either of you picked out your costumes for the masquerade yet? I forgot to look for a mask today. I cannot go back. Smart move, guys. Deciding to change the subject, I pick up my glass of wine and peer at each of the two men over the top. My rather spontaneous question doesn't get an immediate response, but Linnaeus soon lets out the light snort. The entire affair is ridiculous, if you ask me. The fanciful concept of a masquerade is so contrived, it makes my stomach churn. <laughs> Guy, need get some chill. Oh my god. I think they're enchanting. See, Francis. <laughs> Mystery only adds to the beauty of things, after all. I only have one ear in, but it is so chilling. Oh my god. Whoever is the... The voice actor Franz, I met him on Twitter just for a bit, but he seemed char he seemed charming. Whoever he's dating is a lucky bitch. I'm just saying, whoever's voicing Franz has. If you're dating the person who's voicing Franz, you're a lucky bitch. Murmuring a little dreamily, Franz trails a finger along the rim of his own glass, watching me with a subtle smile. Uh, something like that, perhaps. But seriously, you Mysteries could cut the tension with the knife. Cause problems in mortal existence. One should dedicate one's career to providing answers, not questions. Linnaeus has a point, because concerning Francis' uh, dispute, we'll have a few issues. That's the attitude of a man with no romance in his life. <laughs> you wouldn't be able to understand. <laughs> Aren't they taking this a little too seriously? It's just a damn masquerade. Ah, is that the new wine they're bringing out? Oh, right, the king's favorite. Well, should we have a toast? After we we're each served a fresh glass filled with the fruity liquid, both Linnaeus and Franz turn from glaring at each other to watch me expectantly. Well, I guess I was the one who proposed a toast. In that case, let's toast to... <laughs> I don't know what to agree with. Look, I'm a fucking romantic. I'm gonna pick love. But, you know, I aim for success. But can't you have both? To the beauty of love, and to the hope that our lives shall be filled with it as we forge our paths as great men. That sounds cheesy and fake as fuck, Rivian. I am sorry. <laughs> Wait, can I get a- There's my screenshot. Thank you. As I make a show of gazing inspiringly into the distance, I find myself wondering how I even got into this situation. Well, I'd rather them laugh at me than stare daggers at each other. I would be the mediator. Was... Painful. That was- Adorable. Oh, shit, stop. Holy fuck, stop mo stop it with the <laughs> I need to find a voice actor friends again. I need to ask him out on a date. Unless he's taken. In which case it won't accidents happen. <laughs> Just kidding, I'm not gonna be that conniving. With the moment of silence broken, Franz leans in to press his lips against my ear, murmuring lowly, Fuck! It sounded like it, it felt like it. I'll fill your life with love if you wish, little kitten. <gasps> and there are other things I can fill too. 
Holy fuck, that is right in my ear. Shit. I can feel it. <laughs> Rivian felt that too. Holy moly, mother of God, pray for us sinners, now we are born. Amen. I forcefully get... Oh, for fuck's sake. I forcefully guide Franz's shoulder back out of my bubble of personal space and he snickers delightedly all the while. If I weren't a refined gentleman, I'd dump my wine into his lap right now. I bet that would get rid of his infuriating little smirk. I'd like to feel that smirk against my skin. Ah! We continue to dine for a little while longer, the two men exchanging frequent jabs in between my forced attempts to mediate. Finally, unable to stand much more of incredible awkwardness, I push out of my chair and rise to my feet. Well, it seems like they're opening the doors to the ballroom. I think I'll go catch a bit of fresh air before all that dancing starts. <laughs> Not sticking around even to hear a reply, I quickly toss my napkin on the chair and hasten towards the main hall. Luckily, there are a few peop other people who've left the dining hall to chat up privately or stroll around, so I don't look too out of place. Never again. I have no idea how I got caught up in that situation, but it's certainly one I don't want repeated. Those two are bad enough by themselves, yet somehow get exponentially worse together. Ugh. Disgusted noise. Dude, you're alone in a garden. You're bound to get murdered. Finding my way to one of the back doors, I step out into the gardens and take a deep breath of the night air. The sounds of laughter and the clinking of silverware become distant, barely audible through the castle walls. There's an ornate stone bench nested among the hedges and fragrant bushes, so I lower myself onto it with a soft sigh. It feels amazing. Stone feels amazing. My dining chair, however plush, turned out to provide a miserable experience, nesting me between an unstoppable, unstoppable force and an immovable object. Sorry, I'm feeling nasally. <sighs> I clasp my hands behind my head and gaze up at the sky, where the almost full moon floats in a sea of stars. It looks so serene and peaceful, two words that don't seem to have any place at this bustling celebration. All of the grandiose parties I've been to with my family in the past weren't nearly as magnificent in scale. That's right. My family. A smile gradually forms on my lips as I fondly wonder what they're doing right now. Father. Mother. My little sister, who's a few years older than Hazel is. If I have a family of my own someday, will they all get embroiled in these endless politics and quarrels? I think I'd rather have a quiet life in the countryside than be forced to keep dabbling in court affairs, and I'd never want my family to be in a situation like this. Would I be able to give up fine wines and full days of just lazing around and reading, though? Rural life sounds like hard work. It is. Bitch, you have not understood what it's like to farm. I've... I've gone under it a few times. Not fully, because city life, but rural life is pretty hard. I pluck a rose from one of the bushes nearby, admiring the soft petals as I cup it in my hands, minding the thorns, of course. Arden, Linnaeus, Franz, they all seem so at home here, like they were born to be around bustling crowds and courtly intrigue. Could I ever be someone like that? Do I want to be? A part of me is perfectly happy with how I am now, but another, smaller part of me wants more. Can we sing the Hercules song? <laughs> if there's a prize for rotten judgment, I guess I've already won that. No man is worth the aggravation. Da -da -da. To dance, to charm others, to read politics as well as I used to read my favorite picture books as a little boy. <sighs> but I really wonder if it's worth it, or if it'll ever happen. 
They say you can change yourself into what you really want to be if you try hard enough, but it feels like some parts of myself are just immutable, a core part of who I am. Who... who I am? Well, an avid read... Who am I? Well, an avid reader, a purveyor of delicious sweets, the son of the best military strategist in our kingdom's history, and incidentally still very much a verge... Nearby, a faint rustling sound startles me from my thoughts. Oh, for fuck's sake. Just like yesterday, during the dance, I, if I strain my ears, I can barely hear the sound of whispering. <laughs> Gritting my teeth in determination to find the mystery whisperer, I creep closer in its direction as quietly as I can. Back inside. Oh dear lord. Let them hear. A few phrases dis discernible, but I can't, I can't really figure out what they're saying. But for some reason, ominous words echo in the back of my mind. Mock my words, something unpleasant is going to happen. You will be dragged into it whether you like it or not. Franz, I appreciate your warning. I must overwrite this save. Immediately. Now that that's settled... A shiver runs down my spine in a cold tingle. What if this is what Franz was talking about? What if I... <gasps> a sudden tap comes at my shoulder, and I whirl around fast enough to almost lose my balance. God Whoa, damn it, Arden! Down, Riv. Rather than an assassin, the man who stands before me is... Arden. What the hell are you doing here? No, shh. Don't answer that. Wait. I hold my finger to my lips and glare at Arden while straining my ears. The sound of whispering is completely gone, however. Figures. R Riv? What is it? Why are you acting so strange? <sighs> Nothing. Disgusted noise. I wave my hand dismissively, shaking my head. Maybe it's a good thing he came. After all, if those people really were up to something... Is the dinner finished? There'll be a break before the dance, I assume. Probably. I doubt I can dance with all that fricassee in me. And I think my cheeks are swollen from being pinched so much. Oh, by your swarm of aunts? I almost felt sorry for you. Almost. You know, if their interactions weren't so cute, I wouldn't ship them. But you know, you can ship yourself with anyone in these games. His cheeks do look a little pink. Arden nods a little sourly when I mention his fanatic female relatives, rubbing at the back of his neck with a hand. I wanted to sit with you, but it didn't happen. I saw you with a couple of other gentlemen, though. Arden, who is never good at hiding his curiosity, tilts his head in a manner obviously implying his interest. <laughs> do I be sweet with him, or do I fucking just state the obvious? Let's be a bit more civil with the guy. Maybe it'll help. It was awful. I never thought I'd say this, but I would have much rather eaten with you. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> with a delighted grin quickly spreading on his face, Arden lets out a little chuckle. I may be imagining things, but I'm pretty sure his pink cheeks got a shade darker. Well, I would have rather eaten with you too, Riv. Of course. I mean, who'd want to eat with those ladies anyway? Not that they're not nice ladies, it's just... They're your relatives who pinch your cheeks. Yes, yes, I get it. Maybe next time, then. <laughs> you fucking fuck. Definitely! <laughs> I can practically envision him as a huge dog, tail madly wagging, tongue hanging out happily. It'd be more flattering if it were anyone else. Because it's odd though I don't exactly get an ego boost. Taking a deep breath and smoothing my hair back with one hand, I start heading back towards the castle, motioning for Arden to follow. I just love the direction of this visual novel. I mean, you can convey so much with just the simple movement of the background. That's it. You don't need to multiply your resources. You just use one, make some effects, and it'll have the perception of something else. He quickly catches up to my side, distractedly gazing up at the stars. I'm sorry, I got into a game, game review mode. <laughs> Why were you out here, anyway? Just for a walk? 
Yes, I was in dire need of some fresh air. Otherwise, I probably would have passed out like a maiden with their corset stretched too tight. How do you girls even wear those things? I'd ex explode after a minute. Ask Violet Tchotchke. Yas Queen Kamakura. The image of Arden in a corset comes to mind, and I find myself highly disturbed. <clears throat> yes. Well, anyway, what are you going to do until the dance starts? I question him as we step back inside the main hall, pausing as we pass the threshold. Well, after you left the dining hall, we were told there was going to be some kind of announcement. I'll stick around to hear that. And afterwards, there might be time before the dance for me to go for a little jog. Jogging before dancing? You athletic freak of nature! I'd love to see how athletic you are under those clothes of yours. Yes. I just hate feeling all full after a meal, you know. Need to work it off. Yes, yes, whatever you say. I also like how pink his outfit is. As we head further into the main hall, I can see a number of guests have already left the dining room and returned here. If Arden's right, whatever announcement they have for us will probably be given in this hall. My eyes are suddenly drawn to a small figure standing amidst the crowd, talking with someone whose back is turned to me. That's the boy who knocked on my door earlier, isn't it? I wonder if he ever met up with Celeste. I saw her just before dinner, so perhaps the two of them had already spoken. Strange that he was so jumpy about it, though. Heaving a sigh, I eye some of the guests for a few moments before glancing over to Arden, elbowing his side a bit. Well, it looks like most of our fellow fine-blooded company has finished dining. This is a very casual affair, isn't it? Arden nods in agreement, rubbing a hand thoughtfully on his cheek. I think most fancy galas tend to keep guests on a stricter watch or schedule, but the king seems more interested in a relaxed atmosphere. Thank the gods for that. Maybe we're part of some grand social experiment. Like... You know, how long it takes noblemen to start throwing food fights or having sex in the closets? Uh, closets? Arden's shocked expression at my casual mark is inimitably priceless. Really, hasn't he heard worse in the guard forces? It's a bunch of rowdy young men for crying out loud. I can just imagine the Captain Guardsman. I'm sorry, I just got Aveline flashbacks. <laughs> Sorry, Dra anyway, look, Dragon Age is a big fan. Anyway, fellow who read the schedule of festivities last night up on the balcony. Is he going to give his announcement up there? I'm just saying that Dragon Age has been a big part of my teenagehood. I squint up at the man's shape as well as the scroll in his hands. The elegantly dressed crowd does goes gradually quiet as all four, all of our eyes focus on the top of the second floor balcony. There's a bit of antsy shuffling, as a few folks probably drank too much wine and are in desperate need of a visit to the nearest chamber pot. Clearing his throat, the announcer inhales deeply and begins to read. Ladies and gentlemen, refined guest, we hope you have enjoyed His Highness's grand celebration so far. But now you're all part of a murder game. Tomorrow the festival will continue with new games and attractions, and it is His Majesty's sincere wish for you to delight in them all. Now, it is my great pleasure to introduce a highly esteemed guest of honor who... Halfway through his sentence, the man reading the announcement suddenly cuts off. A servant who had just hurried up to his side whispers something in his ear, and I can tell from the announcer's widened eyes that something's happened. Someone died. Hey, is this something set up as part of the event? Who's the guest? Who's the guest? I wanted to know so badly. Murmuring breaks out through the cup. Impatient and curious whispers flitting around. Well, now I'm curious too, damn it. It must be something rather serious for him to just go silent. Why, Arden, what do you think is... Huh? When I glance over to where Arden was, I find a significant lack of Arden standing there now. What? He was never exactly one to be stealthy. Did he have to answer nature's call outside or something? He had plenty of time to do that earlier. Ahem. It is my regret to announce that uh, due to unforeseen circumstances, 
Our guest will not be presented tonight. Hmm? Something's happened. The uneasy voice of the announcer slices through the whispers pervading the room. A, a small issue has arisen oh, that his shit. Majesty's Someone's men dead. are currently attending to. We ask that all guests remain calm as everything will be resolved by morning. During this while, please continue to enjoy the remaining festivities and report any suspicious behavior to the guards. Well, that makes it clear. Finishing his announcement, he bows respectfully and disappears further beyond the balcony, leaving behind a haze of confusion and curiosity. Well, I suppose we'll just retire for the night. I hope they didn't cancel the dance. I wanted to try dancing in my new shoes! The idle chatter resumes its normal level among the guests, although a faint sense of uncertainty seems to hang over everything like a storm cloud. What on earth was that all about, I wonder? Baffled, I shake my head and start to turn around to look for Arden. Excuse me, sir. <laughs> oh shit. Hello. How are you? A heavy hand suddenly firmly claps down on my shoulder. It belongs to the armored guard in front of me, standing to block my path. I'm afraid you'll need to come with me, sir. I beg your pardon, what's the meaning of this? Hold on, I'm gonna... I know I'm gonna end up dead here, so I'm gonna save. I've never been good at these decisions, and I'll probably make bad decisions as we go on. Adjusting his posture rather stiffly, the guard motioned silently for me to walk towards the stairs. Is it just my imagination, or is he treating me like I've done something wrong? I have quite, I have quite a bad feeling about this. Deciding it's in my best interest to cooperate rather than cause a fuss, I head up the staircase, trying to ignore the questioning gazes sent my way by some of the other guests. Hopefully a vicious rumor decrying me as some sort of the base criminal doesn't start spreading throughout my absence. Damn nobles are like vultures around the carcass when it comes to calling each other out. When we reach the guest hall corridor, the guard, who was following closely behind me, quickly curls his gauntlet fingers around my arm. Careful now! No need to leave bruises! When are you going to tell me why exactly I'm being taken to the naughty corner? There has been an incident, sir, and you are under suspicion for involvement. Incident? You mean what the announcement was about just now? Well, clearly I had an established alibi during... Ignoring my objections, the guard pulls me forward down the hallway, this time far less gently. Well, now I definitely have a bad feeling. How on earth did I even get involved in the first place? I was just minding my own damn business. The room we arrive in at is a few halls down from mine. One hand is still, still firmly grasping my arm, the guard wraps his knuckles on the door. Ra wraps? It's supposed to be a si uh, one with a uh, single... Just R, no W, I think. I mean not to subtly from the side all the while. Sir, I've brought one of the suspects. <sighs> one of the suspects. Bloody disgrace. As I gripe quietly to myself, trying to swallow my budding panic, the door suddenly opens. Sorry guys, I'm actually in an office. <laughs> it's about time. Varison! The astonished, bespectacled face of the Inquisitor appears before me. I just saw him at the dinner table. He must have been called out as soon as I left. Linnaeus? You're the one I'm being taken to? Oh, thank goodness. You can extract me from this mess, right? <sighs> Linnaeus headed it in silence, dashes my budding hope of a quick end to whatever I've been caught up in. His eyes narrow somewhat sharply at me, growing slightly chilly, although a dubious expression remains on his face. Well... If you've been implicated as a suspect, it's my duty to detain you, regardless of our acquaintanceship. Bring him inside. I grind my teeth together at his dismissive response, which the guard obeys, pushing me into the half-office, half-bedroom that is presumably Linnaeus' headquarters. I mean quarters. Sitting in a chair in the corner is a small young man, huddled with his knees pulled up against his chest. Wait a second, haven't I seen him before? <gasps> Alright, it's the kid who knocked on my door earlier. What's he doing here, though? 
The, the, that's him, I, I think. S sorry, sir. He gives me a guilty look, quickly glancing away and hugging himself protectively. I see. Well, Rivian, it seems Alistair here is quite convinced you were out in the gardens when tonight's incident took place. So... Wait a damn moment! What is this incident you all keep talking about? Give a man some details before you start accusing him of things he didn't do. Linnaeus pauses, giving me a long scrutinizing look before continuing. Tonight, a man was murdered on the castle grounds. <gasps> a cold sensation tingles down my spine. So something really did happen after all. His body was found in the gardens after the dinner, and as a result, everyone who was in the surrounding area at that time is potentially involved in the affair. He pushes up his glasses in a matter-of-fact manner to punctuate his words, then glances towards the boy on the chair. This young man here was within sight of the garden exit in the main hall during that period, and informed us of the individuals he saw passing through the door in that time frame. And you happen to be one of them. That's ridiculous! Besides, Arden was with me in the gardens. He can tell you quite plainly that I wasn't going around stabbing my dinner fork into anyone out there. I'm afraid Arden has been called to active duty for protecting the king at this time, so reaching him will be quite difficult. You'll have to be taken to a guarded area for further questioning in the meantime. <clears throat> I growl under my breath in frustration, squirming into God's firm grip in one on my arm. There has to be something I can do to get out of this situation. A guarded area is probably the safest place to be with a murder on the loose, but I refuse to be locked up for something I'm not guilty of. <clears throat> so what's to happen? Just as the armored man starts to pull me towards the door, hold on. <laughs> I'm a frequent saver, guys. I'm sorry. It happens. Although I'm also notorious for overriding my save, so that's gonna be a problem. A knock suddenly echoes from it. <gasps> the guard abruptly jerks in surprise, shooting a quick glance towards Linnaeus through his helmet. Well, don't just stare, fool. The door isn't about to open itself. Yes, sir. He reaches out with his gauntleted hand to hesit hesitantly turn the knob. I have to say he's awfully tentative for someone wearing so much armor. I can't see who's standing at the door since the bulky guard is blocking my view, but he doesn't appear to have been stabbed, so I'm assuming it's not the murderer. Sorry to interrupt, but do you mind if I barge in on this chat for a moment? I think I can offer some help with this nasty situation. Hello, Mr. Butler. You're a devilishly handsome butler. Oh wait, no, sorry, France? that was France. <laughs> Why are you here? Chuckling a little at our startled face of sorry, I forgot some of the voices. The tall man dips slightly forward in a mocking bow towards us. My, don't you two know how to make a man feel welcome. Uh, it's a bit cramped in here, isn't it? Must be the books. Order guard. His eyes roaming across the room, Franz pauses to study Alistair for a moment, who nervously shifts a little under his intense gaze. I don't recall asking you for an interior space evaluation. What is your purpose in contaminating my chambers? That's such sharp words, Inquisitor. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just trying to channel that. While the two of them offer each other challenging glares, I glance out the co of the corner of my eye at the door. It's open and the guard seems distracted by Franz as a potential- th Do I escape? Because I don't think escaping is the proper- I don't think escaping would be a proper intention right now. I could try to make a run for it, although I doubt I'd get very far. What a road way of phrasing things. But to answer your question, I'm here to get my kitten off the hook. You know, I had an ex who called me kitten. He was the dad of three kids and they all fought for me. Whatever. Mafia, what do you expect? Franz curls an arm around my waist and pulls me nonchalantly up against his side. Uh, and hand me, you blasted! Wait, did you say you were getting me off the hook? Before I ask how exactly you intend to do that, I'm curious as to how you were even aware of this investigation in the first place. 
Linnaeus raised it, raises an eyebrow suspiciously, staring at Franz with unmasked distaste. Well, I saw the little blonde here being carted off by the guard in the main hall. So I followed them. It was clear enough he had gotten himself into some kind of trouble. As he speaks, Franz squeezes my hip, as casually as someone embracing a longtime lover. I'm starting to think I'd rad almost rather be taken to a cell than put up with this harassment. I see. In that case, are you able to confirm his whereabouts from the period between the end of the banquet and the announcement in the main hall? Franz nods confidently, lips curled into a winning smirk. Of course. You were there too, Glasses. You saw me follow him after he left the table. I was keeping an eye on him when he went to the gardens. You followed me? What is wrong with you, you thick-headed perv- That may be so, but I have little evidence that your words are trustworthy. Your presence in the gardens at that time also implicates you in this matter. But if you can verify each other's alibis, or if you can verify my alibi, then I'm off the hook at least. Interrupting my complaint sharply, Linnaeus drums his fingers on his forearm, returning Franz's smile with a derisive curl of his lip. Franz, however, doesn't seem to be phased by Linnaeus's retort. Franz, how? In fact, if anything, his tone only grows more confident and firm. It just so happens that a guard was with me at the time. I specifically requested his presence in case someone tried to jump the kitten outside. But it seems someone else got jumped instead. But my point is, unless you're going to start accusing your own guards of murder conspiracies, you can confirm my statement with him. The boy's innocent. His unhurried words come to a finish, and Franz turns his head a little to glance down at me, squeezing a little lower down my hip. Oh! <laughs> this time, though, I feel too shocked to even protest. Was Franz actually watching me all the time? Did he really know something was going to happen? He knows all that, but at the same time, I wouldn't put it past him to weave a few words. He doesn't seem to be lying and isn't flinching the slightest even beneath Linnaeus' icy skeptical gaze. I can't believe it, he must have been telling the truth when we met out on the balcony last night. Some serious things are in motion now and I've been caught up in them. But how did he know? <laughs> Very well then. For a moment, Linnaeus gives me a long look, one that seems less accusing and more like some kind of warning. Is he trying to tell me something? Now, if you could refrain from wasting my time any further, please leave my chambers so that I can return to my investigation. I have a feeling Alistair the kid is the one behind it. He turns his back on us to face Alistair once more, to which the boy stares at him wide-eyed. Come on, kitten. Let's give Glasses and his poor victim over there some privacy. Grabbing my hand, Franz pulls me past the somewhat dumbfounded guard and out into the hall, closing the door behind us. I would have loved to see a body- What's in the- Shh. Not yet. With a surprisingly serious frown, Franz leads me down the hall in the direction of our adjacent rooms. A feeling of relief washes over me at being, being taken out of that situation, although there's so many new questions piling up on my plate that I don't know where to start. It's difficult to resist the urge to start asking Franz about what just happened, but his furtive demeanor makes me feel like I should hold my tongue for the moment. We approach the door to my room, and Franz nudges my shoulder expectantly. Fine, fine. Muttering under my breath, I fish out my key and lock the door. Why can't we go in his room? He's certainly going to get the wrong idea from this. Once we're inside, Franz closes the door behind us, flicking the lock before slowly turning back to face me. He exhales a soft sigh, shaking his head and rubbing a hand at the back of his neck. I didn't think they'd strike so soon. At least I was in the right place at the right time. I'll say. I can't believe you thought to bring a guard with you outside. At my surprised comment, Franz's eyes narrow in a smug, mischievous expression as he tilts his head to one side. He fucking... <laughs> he fucking bluffed. Oh, that? 
That was a bluff, actually. Called it. I only watched you from the window. I have no alibi, but I doubted the glasses would take the time to press further. <laughs> I give him a stunned look. He was so completely confident, even while spouting out utter lies to Linnaeus. I don't think I'll ever be able to trust a word out of his mouth again. Just whisper sweet nothings to me. <laughs> Although that aside, I suppose I owe him my gratitude for extracting me so effortlessly. Swallowing my pride for a moment, I let out an awkward cough and briefly avert my gaze. Well, regardless, you have my thanks. Even if it was a bluff, it certainly saved me back there. But I think I deserve some kind of explanation for whatever the hell happened tonight. It seems like you're the only one who knows anything about it. <laughs> a roguish grin creeps over Francis' face at my words. Without immediately replying, he strolls over to the chair by the fireplace, lowering himself down on into it and languidly stretching out his legs spread wide. Ooh! <gasps> Sorry, the image got to me. I wouldn't say you've done anything to deserve an explanation, but I'll give you one, just because I have a soft spot <laughs> for you. Come over here. Wait, 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 save, 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 save. <laughs> Come over here. He motions for me to approach the chair, so I fold my arms over my chest and stroll up beside That's it. That's completely unfair, you know. How am I supposed to defend myself if I... Uh... <laughs> ah! Like a serpent lashing out at prey, Franz quickly reaches out and grabs my waist, pulling me down onto his lap. <laughs> I called it! I feel a strong sense of deja vu as he tightly coils one arm around me, keeping me caged in this ridiculously humiliating position. You really need to quit with this habit of yours, or one day I'll pull out a knife and stick your grabby hands with it. Is that so? I don't think anyone's afraid of a kitten's claws. But I'd love to see you try. I'm worried about rabies, though. I grit my teeth together and squirm out of principle for a few moments, but it's clear that I'm not going anywhere this time either, so I give up and relax in his possessive grip instead. <laughs> I swear, one of these days when he's not looking. Anyway, you said you wanted some explanation for what's going on, right? Well, here's something for you. The man who was killed? He was one of the ambassadors. What? One of the ambassadors? When I repeat his statement in disbelief, Franz leans in to rest his chin on my shoulder, glancing at me from the side with amusement. Are you piecing it together yet? Someone's trying to start a war, Kittim. What better way to do it than to murder a visiting ambassador? And as to why they want a war, well... The dead ambassador's country lost to half its land five years ago to none other than your own kingdom. Let's not forget who was in charge of the armies at that time either. He murmurs these words against my cheek, almost as if he's asking me a riddle, pausing to watch my reaction. Strangely enough, the question I want the answer to most is, how does Franz know so much? For that matter, who even is he? But those questions, as important as they are, surely aren't the key pieces on the board that's been set up. Do you know who's behind this? With so many guests here, it'll be hard to pick them out. And they'll strike again before we get a chance to do anything. Oh, they will, Kitten. And I know that you're going to be their next target. His response doesn't shock me as much as it did before, but I still feel the blood draining from my face at how confidently he purrs out those ominous words. You're telling me that it's some crazy nationalist who wants to kill me because of my father's actions during the war? He suddenly lets out a low laugh at that, his soft exhalation tickling the sides of my neck and making my skin break out in goosebumps. Never have I missed my prized personal space so dearly. Oh, that's entirely possible. But I think the main reason is something a lot simpler. You were out in the gardens right before the murder, weren't you? That means you might have seen the culprit. But I didn't. I only met up with Arden, and Arden's about as likely to murder someone as an eggplant. Ah, but the murderer doesn't know that, do they? 
For all they know, you're keeping quiet for your own safety, or planning some kind of blackmail. Those would be standard games and court affairs, after all. Ah, <sighs> a growing sense of helplessness comes over me as Franz speaks. I want to say he's just making up things to scare me, but... I remember now. Back in the gardens, I heard whispering, something that sent chills down my spine. Let them hear, and back inside. That's what they said. And if they were the ones involved with the murder, I'm sure they saw me or heard my voice when Arden surprised me. In that case, they'd probably think I saw them too. Shit, damn it all to hell! Well, what do you suggest I do? Go and throw myself over the balcony to save everyone some time? Oh no, kitten. <laughs> as romantic a death as that would be, I think I have a better solution. Let's hear it. He flicks his thumb in the direction of my bed, loosening an arm around my waist at the same time. You can go to sleep, and I'll stay here to keep watch. You'd better hurry up before I start feeling the need to extract payment. <laughs> Wait, my ears! Shit! I'm never getting used to that. Fuck it. I am wet like a dish rag right now. Hang on a moment. You're telling me you're going to keep me safe until we find the assassin? Wouldn't it be a better choice to just arrange a carriage home? Franz quirks an eyebrow at me, the corners of his mouth teasingly curling upward. What do you think that would achieve? It's the easiest thing in the world to find out where a noble family lives. And I'm sure your home isn't more tightly guarded than the castle. It's better to solve the problem than to run from it. So your best bet is to suss out the culprit here, get them behind bars, and live happily ever after. With my help, of course. I hesitate, reluctantly acknowledging the rationality in his words. In my moment of pause, Franz reaches around my back, suddenly grabbing my rear with a firm squeeze. Hello! Don't violate me here. <laughs> and before you ask what I get out of it, Besides being able to make you blush and squirm, let me just say I consider this repayment of a debt. That's all you need to know for now. Don't tell me my, don't tell me, Ruby's father spared your life at some point or something. Trying to keep myself from getting too flustered, I give Franz the most vitriolic glare I can muster and push myself onto my feet, backing away from him. I swear, if you so much as breathe in my general direction during the night. Don't worry yourself, kitten. I'd much rather you throw yourself into my arms than have to coerce you into them. He waves a hand dismissively, offering me a suggestive knowing wink, and I turn away with a sigh. Can I really fall asleep with him here? Wouldn't it be a better idea to stay up? Well, I'll trust them. As insufferable as he is, I have to admit, I feel at least a little bit safer with another person in the room. And I don't think he's the one who was after my neck, so... Even if that person happens to be a total lecher... <laughs> Rather than taking my clothes completely off, I decide it's a much more prudent decision to keep sleep in my underwear, so I keep them on as I slide under the covers, not taking my suspicious gaze off of Franz. However, he seems to be lost in thought, prodding with the poker at the fireplace with staring, while staring distantly into its crackling flames. If only I could figure out what's going on inside his head, and what his ultimate goal in doing all of this is. Curling under the sheets, I drift off into an uneasy doze. Occasional noises from within the room make me jerk a little, but eventually my consciousness wanes to a deep darkness. <sighs> I roll over hazily under the covers. Are those birds I hear outside? Ugh. Reluctantly, I pull my head out of the sheets like a bear emerging from hibernation. Gentle sunlight streams in through the window, suggesting that morning's my uh, arrived. Franz? Franz? Ah, that's hard to imitate. I'll never be a good voice actor at this rate. After rubbing my eyes, I glance around the room curiously. No one's here. It wasn't just a dream, right? Then my gaze falls upon a piece of paper lying at the floor, foot of the bed. 
I reached out to pick it up, squinting at the casually scrawled words. Don't go anywhere, kitten. Oh, really? You can go gag on a pile of cocks, you complete bastard. That's what I want to do. Oh ho! I crumple up the note and toss it towards the wall. He really thinks I'm just going to wait around for him during the day. Well, he's wrong. It's broad daylight out and I can handle myself well enough. I don't need him to be my babysitter. Crumbling irritatedly under my breath, I slip out of bed and set about grooming and redressing myself, trying to process the events of the previous day in the meanwhile. So not one of the ambassadors was assassinated, huh? How on earth are they going to keep that a secret from the guests? And what about the other ambassadors? I wonder if this is Linnaeus' job to deal with. He did give me a strange look last night. Is it possible he caught on to what Franz was doing? This is all too much of a mess for me. Muttering to myself, I leave my room and head out in the, into the hallway. The sound of chattering voices echoes up from downstairs, making me feel more at ease. I seriously doubt it can be that dangerous during the day. Most assassins wouldn't risk publicly attacking a target, especially not in an isolated castle like this with nowhere to really run. But they can poison someone from a distance. I've watched too much Danganronpa for this shit. Anyway guys, I think... How long has it been? It's been almost 50 minutes. It's almost an hour. So I think that's a good way to pot it for now. We're in the next segment, I think I feel, but there's been no official announcement. So thank you guys so much for watching. I'm going to continue this at a later date. I'll also do a few other videos first. I'm trying to juggle between this and thesis, so please bear with me in the meanwhile. And this story is so good. I want to keep playing it, but I have a schedule to keep. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Check out my other videos and check out my website. It's I'm gonna put the link in the iCards and the outro cards, so see you guys around. Bye for now.